Munkudan from IIT Delhi, and his talk is a uh, reduced type uh, in uh, one dimensional analytics algebra. So please. Oh, hello? Good? Are you able to hear me? Good? Hello? <laughs> Are you able to hear me? Okay now? Yeah. It's okay now? Yeah. Okay, this is better. Okay, good. Okay, so um, thanks the organizers for inviting me and also ICTP for conducting this wonderful conference. I get to see quite a lot of people who I wouldn't be able to see if I were in India, I'm guessing. So uh, today's talk is going to be uh, defining what reduced type is and uh, how it compares to the usual type and why the word reduced comes into play. It came up as some kind of an offshoot of another problem I was working with. So I'll just explain what reduced type is the setting and why it came to be defined so and how does it compare to the usual uh, Macaulay type. So uh, the setup is the following. So, uh, of course, you have one dimension. So, one, I'm going to assume uh, algebraically closed, and R is S mod I, which is the K join X1 up to Xn modulo uh, the ideal I, and I is contained inside the square of the maximum. Okay, so, that I don't get to reduce the embedding dimension. And it's also a prime ideal. So this guy is actually a prime ideal. So I work only with domain, though I'm suspecting that you could generalize it to reduce. Um, of course, one dimensional, the, the dimension of the ring is actually equal to one. Okay. And it's complete, local, and a domain. Okay. So one of the nice consequences is that the integral closure is uh, it's a nice DVR with unified parameter T. So uh, what one can do is basically write the ring as uh, K join alpha 1 T power A1 alpha N T power A N, where alpha i's are units in uh, R bar. Can define it as one dimensional and becomes uh, nice ring length. So, uh, of course, my handwriting is so bad, but these are capital X's. And if I write small X's, these are the images of uh, Xi in R. Okay, so, basically, this guy is my X1, blah, blah, blah. This guy is my Xn. Okay. And, I and these guys, these numbers, are kind of very important. So A1 up to An, and the, uh, it's kind of, uh, you can define valuations on uh, AR. So on R bar, as the following. The valuation of uh, P of T is summation of Ci, T power i, of course, the power series in T power i, to be the uh, minimum among all the i's that the ci is not equal to zero. The so order valuation, the standard order valuation on the P of T. So this induces a valuation on, on R also. Okay. This induces a valuation on R, so you have a valuation semigroup on R. Okay, V of R is the uh, valuation semigroup a 
Okay, the, I'll be uh, talking a lot more on the valuation semigroup, but there's a very strong relationship between the ring and the valuation semigroup also. Okay, if, if the valuation semigroup exhibits some properties, then the ring also exhibits some equivalent properties. Okay, I'll come back to that in a little bit. And uh, also, also know that the minimal reduction uh, of the uh, maximal ideal x1 of xn is the ideal generated by x1 is precisely because if you extend the uh, maximal ideal to the integral closure, it's actually principally generated. Okay. So the minimal reduction of the maximal ideal is nothing but the ideal generated by x1 itself. Sorry? Uh, yeah, 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 you can assume that. So, yeah. You can arrange it in such a way that the A's are in increasing order. You have the minimal valuation in, which is also the multiplicity. Yeah, sure. Okay, so one quick example of uh, is that uh, take, for example, uh, K adjoint T power 4, T power 6 plus T power 7, and T power 11. Now, this guy is uh, nothing but t power 4, t power 6 times 1 plus t, and t power 11. The valuation semigroup is uh, of r, where this guy is my r, is actually generated by 4, 6, 11, and 13. So, um, it's kind of, uh, uh, Kind of easy to just say that you just take these valuation and valuation semigroup will be generated by A1, A2, A1, A2, but it's not true. You have to be a little bit more careful. The valuation semigroup may be generated by more elements than the A1, A2, A2. Okay, so uh, the next definition I want to make is about the conductor. Conductor is nothing but R join R bar on the quotient field. Yeah. And it's the largest common ideal between the ring and the, uh, and the uh, uh, integral closure. And there is no way that the conductor is always contained inside a principal ideal. Okay. And this guy is very special because uh, one can define this guy to be generated by T power C, T power C plus 1, all the way up to T power C plus A1 minus 1. And... Uh, this guy is special because it contains every monomial after t power c, okay? but not t power c minus 1, of course. c minus 1 is not in the conductor, but it contains every monomial after t power c. Like for example, a quick example for that one is, um, for example, take k adjoint t power 4, t power 11, and t power 17. You can show that the conductor contains everybody after 19, okay? And t power 18 is not in the conductor. It's not very hard to prove it. You can basically check all the valuations that appear generated by 4, 11, 17, and you can prove that everybody after 19 is present. Okay, so um, uh, for example, this one, if you want to check the conductor, the conductor is going to be 10. Okay, so what is this uh, reduced type? Reduced type is basically the k dimension of the conductor plus x1 modulo x1. That's the reduced type. Uh, I'm going to call this as s throughout the talk, s of r or s. Either one of these will be called as the uh, reduced type. Uh, okay, first I'll explain why this is important, then I'll explain why it's called a type or a reduced type, stuff like that, okay? So, um, one of the principal reasons why we were studying this is the, uh, it actually comes up at a, as an attempt to solve cases of burgers. 
So what we were able to show is that you construct an overring, which is the conductor modulo x1, okay, conduct an uh, overring of the ring uh, R. What this one is essentially doing is that it will take the ring R and adjoin T power B1 up to say Bs, where uh, Bi is not in the valuation semigroup of R, but it is actually inside the interval C minus A1 comma C minus 1. So essentially what's happening is that the embedding dimension of uh, S is actually N plus S, where this guy is a reduced type, and this guy is the embedding dimension of the original ring. And we are able to show that if uh, S is quasi-homogeneous, among other results, this is not the complete set of uh, cases where we can show the Baragas, but, and the other one is also pretty nice. So n power four is contained inside the conductor plus x1, and there's also bound on the reduced type. Then uh, the module of differentials omega r has torsion. Okay, so the model of differentials omega r will have torsion. So that, that affirming what Burgess is true. The first one is nice because it's strictly better than the old result of, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, I'll try. Okay. Uh, we're here. No, both of them. Either one of okay, yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So either this is true or this is true, then the burgers. These are not the complete set of cases, but two illustrative examples where the reduced type comes into play. Okay. The first one is nice because it's strictly better than the uh, original result of Shea, where he proved that if R is quasi homogeneous, then the burgers is true. But this one is strictly better. Second one is nice because the original results involved when the maximal ideal is contained inside a principal ideal. I mean, the fourth power of the maximal ideal is contained in the principal ideal, then the Burgess is true. But this is much better. M power four is not contained in the principal ideal, but C plus X1. But you do have some bound in the reduced time. Okay, so this is, this is the reason why we ended up studying the uh, reduced type. And I'll try to write a bit more bigger of why. Sorry? A character check. Character check is zero. It's always zero, sorry. It's always zero. Okay, so uh, why the reduced type? So where does the word reduce and the word type comes into play? is because uh, of the uh, following. So C plus X1 modulo X1 is always contained inside the uh, X1 colon M modulo X1. Okay. Uh, you can see that uh, the conductor times the maximal ideal is always contained inside the uh, principal ideal. And that is because M times the conductor is nothing but X1 times the conductor. X1 is the minimal reduction of M. Therefore, M times the conductor is nothing but X1 times the conductor. Oh, this is And the dimension of this one is your usual Quinn Macaulay type, whereas the dimension of this one is the reduced type. Okay, so the k dimension is S. This one is the type. K dimension, that's why this is called as a reduced type. Okay. So one thing is apparent. One is less than the reduced type is always less than the type of R. Okay. So reduced type can either be one or it can be the type. And that's why this called it, uh, that's why we coined the word reduced type. Okay, 
Um, okay, so what the purpose of this talk is to understand what kind of rings exhibit extremal properties. When is it one? When is it the type? So, question so far on the definition? Okay. So, when is S of R equal to one and S of R exactly equal to the type of R? Okay. When does it exhibit extremal condition? So this we call it the uh, minimal reduced type, and this we call it as the uh, maximal reduced. Type. Okay. So when does the ring exhibit minimal reduced type, and when does the ring exhibit maximal reduced type? Okay, so it's true that when R is going to change, then the uh, reduced type is actually equal to one, that because if the type is one, then the reduced type is four to be one. But not conversely. Okay. But uh, not conversely. Okay. Not conversely. A uh, simple example, one of the simplest example is R is K join uh, T to the 4, T power 11, and T power 17. Okay. One can easily check that this guy has reduced type 1, okay. Okay. but it's not going to change. Okay. It's actually not going to change. And the way to check Gorin chain is pretty simple. It's not as hard as it sounds because all you have to check is that the map from uh, z to z, where it takes x to c minus 1 minus x, takes elements to non elements and non elements to elements. So you can easily check that 4 is not a member of the semi group, but c minus 1 minus 4 is also not a member of the semi group. So it takes non elements to non elements, therefore it cannot be uh, Gorin chain. Okay. okay. Uh, how do I, uh, how did I say that the reduced type is one very quickly here? Ideally, you would have to go through the definition, but uh, there's a simpler way to do this. All you have to do to compute the uh, reduced type is count the uh, number of integers in C minus A1 comma C minus 1, but not in the valuation semigroup. Okay, the cardinality of the set of integers between C minus A1 and C minus 1, but not in the valuation semigroup, that will give me the uh, reduced type. And uh, why does that happen? Well, if you want the, so you want the uh, length of this quotient, C plus H1 mod X1. That is like computing the length of C modulo C intersect with X1. Okay. Now, if I want to compute the length, all I have to do is count the valuations here and then delete the valuations coming from here that the cardinality will give me the length of the quotient. So in this case, it will happen that this guy is always contained inside M times the conductor. Okay. So the relevant valuation coming from here correspond to the uh, valuation inside the uh, valuation semigroup, but also inside this interval. Okay, so if I'm deleting the uh, valuations coming from C intersect with X1, I'm looking at the valuation which are not there in B of R, but it is there inside this interval. Okay? So, for example, if I go back to this one, the conductor, I think it is uh, 19. And I just have to look at 19 minus 4, and then look at 18. Look at the valuations which appear between 19 minus 4 and 18, and check how many of them are not there. So, uh, so that's just a very quick way to compute what the uh, reduced type is. Um, okay. So, Okay, so the first thing is, like I said before, we are trying to c conclude or make some 
uh, observations on when the ring is minimal reduced type or maximal reduced type. Okay. So there is a very nice uh, uh, containment, which is C plus X1 contained in X1 colon M is contained inside that. Okay. And the uh, first thing we had was this very nice containment, and we were looking at can you conclude something about the minimal reduced type or the max reduced type depending on the core length of the conductor. Okay. And the first result we had was uh, in the following. If the length of the conductor, core length of the conductor is actually two, or if the core length of the conductor is three, and R has uh, minimal reduced type, I mean, minimal uh, multiplicity, then the, uh, then R has maximal reduced time. Okay. It has, R has maximal reduced time. But unfortunately, there could be a lot of containment in between this one and this one, which kind of did not help us actually improve this result beyond uh, the co length of four. Okay. So we, we turned our attention to numerical semigroups, and uh, we thought that maybe you have a nice ring R, you can always construct the uh, numerical semigroup, which is related to this one, to the ring R. And we were trying to see how the type of R is related to the type of numerical semigroup and reduced type of R is related to a reduced type of the numerical semigroup and see, make some conclusions on this side to get some information on this side. And there's obviously a lot of information that you have on the right hand side for numerical semigroup because that seems to be more well studied. Okay, so. Uh, so. Uh, Numerical semigroup. Okay. So, uh, like I said, you have a ring, you construct a corresponding numerical semigroup. How do you do that? Just go ahead and take the, uh, if the numerical semigroup is actually, numerical semigroup is actually generated by D1 upper Dn, just take the uh, corresponding numerical semigroup to be uh, K join T power D1, T power D. Okay, so what the information that you have, um, why, is this, why is this kind of important? Why is the uh, numerical semigroup important? Well, like I was doing there, I was able to conclude that the uh, ring was actually not Gorenstein because of a result of Kuntz, who says that the ring is uh, Gorenstein if and only if the valuation semigroup is symmetric. So, um, if and only if V of R is symmetric. So symmetric basically means that there's a function from Z to Z, and it takes X to C minus one minus X, where C is your conductor for the ring. It should take the elements of here to the non-elements, and non-elements to elements. So that's the kind of symmetry that you're looking for. But uh, it has been improved by Barusi and Froberg to the uh, R is almost going gene if and only if V of R is almost symmetric. Okay, this definition is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to avoid the definition, but remember that there is something there. Okay, almost symmetric ring, almost symmetric semigroup definition. There's something happening there, so just keep that in mind. Okay, okay what about the type? What the type of this ring? Well, uh, it's uh, been proved by a lot of people. See, Froberg, uh, Gottlieb, and uh, 
hag quiz. I'm pretty sure this word is wrong, and you, know, you can correct it by yourself. But the type of the uh, numerical semigroup is the cardinality of the set Z belongs to Z modulo evaluation semigroup such that X plus H belongs to V of R for every H belongs to V of R. Okay, so this is the type. So the type of numerical semigroup is a collection of all integers which are not in the valuation semigroup, but when you add the numerical semigroup element to it, it falls into the numerical semigroup. And unfortunately, the type is not. Uh, yeah, Z plus H. So, uh, theorem of uh, Barusi, Dobbs, and uh, Montana, the type of the ring is always less than or equal to the type of the corresponding numerical semigroup. It's always less than or equal. And it can be strictly less than the type of the numerical semigroup. But funny enough, it doesn't happen for reduced type. The reduced type of R is always equal to the reduced type of uh, the numerical semigroup. There's no distinction between the reduced type of the ring and the reduced type of the numerical semigroup. Okay, so what the story is that the, uh, how do you translate properties now? Theorem, how to go forth from uh, the uh, ring to the numerical semigroup is the following. So R is of uh, minimal reduced type. If and only if the numerical semigroup is of uh, Of course, uh, you can combine all these equalities up to get this one. It basically says that S of R is actually equal to the uh, S of K join uh, the valuation semigroup, which is less than or equal to the type of R, less than or equal to the type of the valuation. Okay. We have this long string of uh, inequalities here. And you should be able to prove that it's of minimal reduced type if and only if the numerical semigroup is. So if you want to study numerical, I mean, minimal reduced type is kind of much easier because it just follows through to the new, just take the corresponding numerical semigroup to be able to prove that. But the, on the other hand, maximal reduced type is weird. So R is of max reduced type implies that the numerical semigroup of V of R is of uh, max reduced. And the converse happens if you know that the types are equal. Converse is true if the type of the ring is actually equal to the so max reduced type is much harder to play with than the min reduced type. But either way, the theorem kind of says that if you want to know a lot of information on the max or min reduced type of the ring, you better go to the numerical semigroup, study when is it max or min reduced type there, and put it back to the ring R. Okay, so 
uh, you won't, it's much better when you have a minimal multiplicity. Uh, okay, so let's stop with this one. Is that uh, R is a numerical semi group? Then R is of a min reduced type if and only if the maximum of all the x's so that x is in the pseudo Frobenius set, I'll explain what the pseudo Frobenius set minus c minus one is strictly less than c minus a one minus one. What's the pseudo Frobenius set? If this guy is the pseudo Frobenius set. So there's no h here. Okay. So if it's it's a numerical semigroup. You can easily check out when is the minimal reduced type. Just check that the maximum among the pseudo Frobenius numbers, except for C minus 1, is strictly less than this number. And the, when you have R is of max reduced type, if and only if the minimum among all the x's in the pseudo Frobenius set. Uh, of the numerical semigroup is less than or equal to C minus one. Okay. Now that you bought the study from the ring to numerical semigroup, then you can do it for a lot of cases. When is it Gorin's chain? When is almost Gorin's chain? When it is far flung Gorin's chain, almost Gorin's chain, nearly Gorin's chain, all these cases can be brought into and you can study this. I think I'll stop here. Thank you. So any question or remark? My question is uh, when uh, you say that uh, is uh, of maximum reduced time, that type, then can you, can you deduce something about uh, the, some properties of the associated grid ring in this case? What's the property of the? Of the associated grid ring. Uh, I haven't thought about it. I don't know much about it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. The minimal, I don't think so. That's right. The maximal could be. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Other question? Uh, the minimal or maximal reduced type will uh, act as a sufficient condition for good properties of uh, uh, the ring. I mean, uh, other homological or, you know, properties of blow-up algebras. Uh, I don't know anything about the blow-up algebra, but the story originated from Burgess, so I was more concentrated on studying these minimum max radius type to solve Burgess or get more information to cases of Burgess. But okay. yeah, sure. But I don't know much about the uh, blow-up algebra. Uh, just something related to what you said at the end. We could make some connections with nearly Gorenstein, almost Gorenstein. Do you have done. some ideas in your head? Sorry? Do you have some ideas to make those connections? Uh, I uh, know you the connection. Some? I haven't read, shown it yet. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. thanks. Hello? So if not, we thank Spiegel again. <laughs>